Hello, you're watching Our New X, and today let's talk about a recently finished airing Chinese period drama, Ning An Ru Meng, Story of Kunning Palace. This is a 38 episode period drama that has finished airing on the platform iQIYI. It is led by Zhang Linghe, Bai Lu, Wang Xinyue, Zhou Junwei. For more of the detailed information, I'll put it up on screen here. If you have been following Chinese drama land for more than a year, you probably know since day one of this project started moving, it's been followed like crazy by paparazzi. Just a little bit before this drama went live, we had another drama on the platform Youku called Will and Xiang Lai Sent of Time. Essentially the same story. I will give this drama a very kindly 0.5 gold mine. If not, it's just gonna be sitting around gold slash land mine. As usual, let me first introduce you quickly to the story and then we're gonna go into the details. The story of Quentin Palace, Ning Ai Ru Meng, is essentially a rebirth story of our main female character, played by Bai Lu in this drama called Jiang Xue Ning. In her previous life, she ended up being the empress, sitting on the highest position of all the women in the kingdom. But she climbed up there by doing a lot of wrong things. After she died, she woke up in her younger body again before all the crap has happened in her life and she decided to live in a completely different way so that she will never end up being that failed empress. That's our story and it's mainly focused on her second life, but occasionally there will be flashback of her first life when she tries to avoid repeating her fate again. Let's first talk about what is maybe worth watching for you of this drama, although I don't have a very high opinion about it. Number one, this is not a rough and very low budget period drama production. You can tell that they've spent money. At least in this drama, you wouldn't see actors with hair color that totally doesn't belong to the period or the backdrops of a set that looks even more random than any contemporary dress up and take a photo studio backdrops. Number two, overall this drama doesn't try to sell you or try to advocate or having our main characters hold extremely against our current value beliefs. Basically, if you really mind those unbelievable values that certain main characters have in dramas such as Only For Love, then even when this is a period drama, most of the characters are pretty normal. Number three, the best actors in this drama are all the older, more veteran established actors playing the female lead's parents, male lead's uncle, and male lead's actual father who is a jerk but played by magnificent Huang Haibing. Although this drama already on paper is not making much sense, when they're acting, they actually manage to hold it together. These are the three points I exhausted my brain to extract from the drama. Now let's talk about all the things that's uh, not really working with this drama. Point number one, this is a specific thing that may not really mean anything to most of the international audiences if you really are not very read into Chinese history or costume or architecture history or politics. If you don't mind these things and you're really just watching it as entertainment, which I mean, I'm also doing that, otherwise I wouldn't be able to watch this drama, then it really is irrelevant. But to me, it's just really funny and made it a bit hard for me to get into the story because this is a da luan dun, a pot that has everything put together and mixes up all times and periods in every sense. Mostly it refers to Tang, Song, Ming, Qing, these four dynasties from 6th century up to a little bit more than 100 years ago. For example, architectures and sets, this drama really did the type of thing that I think I'll interpret that as, since we're filming in Hengdian, let's just make it all down in Hengdian and find every building we need in Hengdian. They used Chunqiu Tangcheng. You can look at this video. They used Qingling Shanghe too. You can look at this video. They also used Mingqing Gongyuan. You can look at this video. These three completely irrelevant sets of irrelevant architecture styles, put them all together in one drama and whatever is convenient for us to film, we go there and film it. Then when it comes to costume, it is the same problem. The male characters, when they're in court wearing their official clothing, it's all based on Tang Dynasty-ish style. The female characters, they're all based on Song Dynasty-ish style. With ish, I mean, it's not really that accurate, but what I'm wearing today is more Song Dynasty. And then the servants, whether it's the male or female, are all dressed in pure Ming Dynasty. So when you see a lady is walking with two servants girl, the girls are in Ming Dynasty and the lady is in Song. And there's about five to 600 years time gap between them. That made me cannot take this drama seriously pretty much throughout. Number two, ha, this director. And he is now permanently known 
on China's internet with the nickname Zhu Da Deng, which means Zhu Big Light. He likes to use a very big light to backlit the actors. It's just like a raw light bulb that's shining and it's so overexposed you can't really see it and the light source comes out of nowhere and certainly it's not the moon or the sun and certainly ancient time there's no way you can create that type of light it's just outside of your window but it does not matter it's so-called atmospherical lighting that doesn't have any atmosphere then he also continued the use of weird camera movement spinning it spins this way it spins <laughs> this way and it even flips a shot making the female lead's head pointing to the floor and then spin it thanks to this completely unprofessional and god knows where his ideas come from director's help <laughs> this drama ended up looking like what it looks like and those are just the very obvious part of the failed direction of this drama. Point number three, the plot and setup of this story. Switch off your brain, go with it and forget about logic. Then you probably can watch. As soon as you stop and think, nothing makes a lot of logical sense. Our male lead character is the, uh, let's just say Mei Chang Su character, pretty much the same. Has a big secret in the past, gone through terrible things, tries to get a revenge and super clever and can influence politics. This is like an environment fire reduced to 1%. I haven't read the original novel, so I don't know if it's the novel or the adapted screenplay, but whatever it is, people who are writing the story are completely uneducated with Chinese history, with court politics, with how power structures work, different governmental departments, how they come together, what is the procedure of things in the running of the government, who does what and how does it gets done. It basically is when the plot is convenient and we need this to happen, it will happen. And this whole world has no structure. The story starts with a rebellious act from a Wang, which is also from the imperial family, but not really sitting on the throne prince who rebelled against the ruling emperor and failed but caused a lot of calamity at the capital, he didn't actually get dealt with at all. He basically went back to where he comes from and just stay there happily for like a decade or so. It does not make sense for that kind of thing to happen. If you win, you kill the current ruling emperor, you usurp the throne and you try to rewrite history in every way to legitimize your rule. And it has happened multiple times in Chinese history. And if you fail as a brother to the ruling emperor or uncle, or whoever, right? You completely fail. <laughs> You're dead. Okay, there's no way you're gonna be kept alive in any way and while that government is still running. Like, it does not make logical sense. But in this drama, it does not matter. This bad prince did very horrible things and just was allowed to exist for the next decade doing whatever he likes. Um, Like, how does that work? Your super cool male lead is built on clouds. It's basically the script writer says so and it actually doesn't validate anything and logically I just cannot process it so I cannot believe anything the story tells me. I know I'm still watching this drama for the sake of making a video like this one right now <laughs> but while I was watching it oh my god the torture. Last point the main lead and their acting and everything that's wrong with their acting. With all the problems I've said about this project had they picked really good actors who are really good at acting. It is still exactly the same script, same director, same sets and same money available. It probably can pull this drama up to one gold mine. So we're talking about the four main ones, Zhang Linhe, Bai Lu, Wang Xinyue and Zhou Jingwei. This is a combination of people who have zero chemistry together. If you have to rank who is the best among the four, in my opinion, it will be Wang Xinyue, but he really doesn't have that much screen time. And there's a little development between him and the female lead and overall he is just a very safely flyby but really not making a strong impression character and his performance is like I said among the four best. But if you have to compare him outside of the drama with other performances that you can see coming from same age actors, he's just like not really that good either. Zhou Jingwei in my opinion is the weakest. Don't want to go into too much details. To me his acting is like not even passing grade one of any acting academy and he will get a lot of trouble with his teachers. When he returns his performance in class with that quality of acting. That's how I would put it. Then with Zhang Linhe and Bai Lu, they're pretty on par. In terms of creating a on-screen main couple that has zero chemistry, nothing goes on behind those eyes, holding their script and just reciting in front of the camera and trying to, I don't know, look good for the camera. That's all they're doing throughout the whole drama. Their performances cannot 
move you in any way. And if they're not making you laugh, it's already a good thing. For Zhang Linghe, I think it's due to his understanding of his characters, also the poor quality of the writing, also the director's direction, that he completely actually doesn't understand the character he's playing. Every moment he's on camera, he's playing the tag. Strategist, clever, plotting, having a sad childhood, all those tags, sexy male lead. He's not playing Xie Wei as a person. And then with a director who doesn't understand also how to elicit performance from actors or even read deep into the human part that can be pulled out from a character on script, it just creates this very wooden, without coherent through line, without depth, without layer, facade of a character. And then I've rented about that he doesn't open his eyes sometimes and he looks he's sleepy. I think that's totally due to direction. So easy to just change that when you see it on monitor and just tell the actor, open your eyes up a little bit more. You look like you're about to fall asleep and it will solve it. Also, he tries to play deep and cool. So he turns the corner of his mouth down most of the time and looks very pretentious. And unfortunately, our female lead actress really likes to talk with her upper lip. So you have this and talking to each other. It's funny. Okay, sometimes you just laugh out because it's so funny. And by the way, each moment your character is supposed to do something, even just that supposed to do on the surface, sometimes doesn't get very accurately expressed by her acting. And then anything deeper, more complicated, to do with the character's through line, arc, personality, details, like nothing exists in her performance. These two come together. The worst part is both of them are really bad at line delivery. They have very similar problems, which is they don't understand how to break down a sentence with luo ji zhong ying, with the logics of what you're saying, where you need to put the emphasis on. That particular word or two in a long sentence, you make that stand out, therefore your meaning gets conveyed because it's your character speaking under that particular circumstances to that particular particular person. That's how normal people talk in real life too. Neither of them understand that. So they are equal weighting every character they speak. And when they get to emotional parts, they do not know anything other than shouting at each other. So they shout in very untrained, unpleasant, vocal quality. And then thanks to the director's aesthetics, he adds reverb to the end of their shouting. And personally, I've really had enough. Before they can fix it, I just wish they can get dubbed from now on in every drama they do in the future until like it gets fixed and it's listenable. Is that a word? Finally, to conclude, after watching 38 episodes, if I have to pick just like one couple that I actually liked and character I appreciated, it really would be Liu Xian and Yu Fangying. This pair, at least at some point, makes me feel, ah, oh, I can feel that little bit bubble in the romantic storyline and the sad story between them, and they both do a good enough job for their characters. Then, the last bit of the drama, the final kind of like big showdown in the palace, that whole sequence, it's just so funny. Everything about that part of the episode can be pulled out and then used as the wrong examples at any type of media, drama course, school, whatever, to, to just shot by shot analyze how you should not be acting, not directing, using cameras, using slow motion, using angles. Everything of that whole sequence is wrong. In a way, I feel really bad for Zhang Linghe particularly because he gets a lot of slow mo shots and it looks so bad. I mean, in this drama overall, he has the worst camera angles and the worst slow motions. And yeah, I miss Chang Heng Xianjun in Cao Lan Zhu. It looked so much better in that drama. So it kind of slipped into a kind of ranting at the end of this video, but I guess still it's Quan Kao Tong Hang Chen Tuo. If it wasn't for Only for Love happening at the same time, like by the same actress, and then you're watching it at the same time, this drama would probably crash even more. So it should really thank Only for Love for providing contrast so that this drama doesn't look that bad. I wouldn't recommend this drama to anyone, even when you like the lead actors or, or any of the actors in this drama for whatever reason, I, I would suggest you watch their other stuff. Like if you like Zhang Linghe, rewatch Cao Lan Zhu. <laughs> Even the earlier drama he did the, the, with Chen Yao, that detective drama, like quite a couple of years ago, like even watch that one. And then if you like Bai Lu, go back and watch the olden days of her drama when she uh, wasn't yet playing the prettiest of them all. That would be the end of my review on the drama. Ning An Rumeng, Story of Kunin Palace. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy.